birth of a baby is one of the greatest wonders we can witness as humans. Yet from the moment of their birth, children are regarded as possessions in many cultures and countries around the world. Humans have the singular ability to burden their children with their fears, ignorances and psychoses. Many cultures and religions regard girls as less of a value than boys, but that is not to say that boys fare that much better. Fear and ignorance ravage mankind. A lack of understanding of how the world functions leads the human race to heap all the doubts and fears upon children. There is, it seems, safety in numbers, even if the common held belief has no validity. Whilst those in developed economies may pass judgment on the developing countries and their appalling human rights abuses, the developed world is not exempt from child abuse and mistreatment. Recent incidences of child sexual grooming, abuse, extreme violence and murder shows that the world as a whole has issues with the manner in which children are viewed, treated and abused. No country, no culture or religion is exempt from the responsibilities and society as a whole has to examine its approach to child rearing and treatment. Culture and religion are often the main underlying causes of child abuse and is often associated with the Middle East, African or Asian cultures and religions. In many cultures, boys are valued higher than girls as boys will do manual work and contribute to the family's wealth and income. This attitude still prevails in many countries in the 21st century. The list of abuses perpetrated upon our children in the name of God, culture or superstition is almost endless. Female genital mutilation or FGM is endemic in Africa where 101 million girls aged 10 and over have been mutilated. Around the globe 130 million girls and women have undergone FGM. It is practiced in at least 26 of the 43 African countries. In the UK, it is estimated that 65,000 girls are at risk every year. Apart from the intense pain and hemorrhaging experienced by young girls, many go into shock, many become incontinent and a significant percentage die from infections in succeeding years. Male genital mutilation or circumcision. It is common practice amongst Jews, Muslims, right-wing Christians and other cultures to circumcise boys at birth or at a later stage of seven or eight years old. In the Philippines, a Catholic country, it is done at the age of 11. In the USA, it is often done at birth. In many US states now, circumcision is no longer paid for by HMOs, health maintenance organizations, as there has been a growing trend of HMOs being sued for violation of human rights by adults who have undergone the procedure as a baby. Religions hide behind their ancient faiths and practices and continue to perform this abominable violation of human rights. On average, 250 baby boys die every year in the US from circumcision. However, research suggests that the figure is much higher. Which doctor would want to report the death of a baby whilst undergoing this procedure? And so it is often listed as a heart failure, excessive bleeding or infection. The rate of death is even higher in African countries. The issue is not whether this procedure can be done safely. The issue is that this procedure should be the choice of the individual and that choice should be made at the age of majority, 18 in most countries. It is interesting to note, 10,000 men in the US state of California every year have foreskin reconstruction surgery, child abuse. In the UK, one in 14 children have been physically abused. The case of child physical abuse, which includes beating, punching and hitting, is harder to detect, especially in developed economies. The recent case of baby P in the UK highlights the difficulties of identifying such abuse and taking the correct action to stop it. Abuse takes place in many different situations and scenarios, within the family and within organizations, such as the Catholic Church, Muslim madrasas, other religious organizations, orphanages, as well as youth offender institutions and public schools. The recent report of clergymen and nuns in the Irish Catholic Church show that rape and sexual molestation were endemic in the church-run industrial schools and orphanages. The investigation, lasting nine years, which ended in a 2,600-page report, found that Catholic priests and nuns terrorized thousands of boys and girls for decades in the Irish Republic, while government inspectors failed to stop this appalling abuse. This abuse, however, is not just endemic in the Irish Catholic Church, but occurs in many other religious institutions where there is an authority figure holding sway over a following. Child abuse takes many forms. 
child physical and sexual abuse in institutions, commercial sexual exploitation of children and organized child sex ring, child fatalities including shaken baby deaths and Munchausen syndrome by proxy, child abuse among immigrant population, for example excessive discipline of children or other incidences in which cultural norms conflict with child welfare laws, exposure of children to hazardous material and also abandonment of children and juvenile runaway. Child prostitution. Child prostitution is rapidly becoming a global epidemic that has yet to receive appropriate medical and public health attention. It is estimated that 1 million children are forced into prostitution every year worldwide and that more than 10 million children are in prostitution. Physical and mental torment suffered by children forced into prostitution is just one of the many problems children have to deal with and have to carry this into adulthood. Inadequate data exists on the health problems faced by prostituted children who are at high risk of infectious diseases, pregnancy, mental illnesses, substance abuse and violence. It is endemic in many countries and cultures where poverty is high. Poverty is certainly a driving force, but it is not the only reason. In many cultures, children, and especially girls, are valued less and their lives are sacrificed for the well-being of the family as a whole. Child Soldiers of the estimated 250,000 child soldiers in the world today, 40% are girls. These girls are often used as wives, sex slaves of the male combatants. The use of these child soldiers is mostly the domain of the rebel forces in conflicts, but some governments also use child soldiers in armed conflicts. Not all the children are seconded to active combat. Some are used as porters, cooks and spies. As part of their recruitment initiation, children are often forced to kill or maim family members. This breaks the bond with their community, making it difficult for them to reintegrate. The laws of war state that the recruitment or use of children under the age of 15 by parties in a conflict is a war crime. At the moment, 156 countries have ratified an international treaty that prohibits the use of children under the age of 18 by government forces and non-state armed groups in fighting. If mankind is to progress and develop, we must all understand our responsibilities to our children, that we as adults do not own children, but are their guardians, that we must guide them to the best of our ability to become stable, responsible citizens of the future. The old adage, children are our future, rings very true. It is somewhat absurd that having a child is a difficult and stressful event, yet there is no requirement to gain any type of license, certificate, or in any way to show one is capable of rearing a child.